What do I look like? Hello my friends, Arlo the Disembodied Voice here with another Animal Crossing video because what else are we gonna talk about? <laughs> it's not like I've got a huge list of video ideas here. Oh, wait, I, I totally do. This thing is quite full. Wow, yeah, this could last me ages. Okay, well, one more Animal Crossing video. One more until I do my full review. Whatever. Point is, golly, I love me some Animal Crossing New Horizons. But the game's got some annoying little issues that I'm desperately hoping the developers choose to address. Some are new issues brought on by the game's new mechanics, and some are very old issues that feel like they should have been dealt with by now. But what all these issues have in common, though, is that they would all be very easily fixed with a patch or two. In this video, I'll be detailing some very small changes that Nintendo would be silly not to make because they would make the game that much better with relatively little effort on the part of the devs. I've already a dude enough, so without doing it further, let's get to it. We might as well cover this first because you know it's coming. It's at the top of every Animal Crossing patch wish list out there, and it of course has to do with crafting. Crafting changes the way Animal Crossing is played. It's probably the biggest singular innovation in the history of the franchise, and if you ask me, it makes the game a heck of a lot more fun. But if you've ever wanted to craft a big stack of manila clams into a big stack of fish bait, or you wanted to make a bunch of hot furniture, or you just wanted to stock up on backup tools, you know how painfully slow the process can be. It's nice that you can mash A to speed up the animation, but nothing will speed up all the other button presses you've got to do each and every time you craft something. I mean, it's frustrating. I have literally been considering buying a cheap third-party controller with a turbo function just so I can toggle on the A button and walk away for a while. There's one major patch the game needs yesterday, and it is, say it with me now loud enough so maybe Nintendo can hear, bulk crafting. If we want to craft multiple of an item, we should be able to do so easily and with only one crafting animation, pure and simple. Honestly, I'm surprised they didn't think to include the option in the first place. It seems really obvious to anyone who's played the game for more than a day or two. It would also be nice to have the option to craft upper tier items without having to craft smaller items first. For instance, you could just select the shovel and it would automatically use the materials needed for both the shovel and the flimsy shovel, so you wouldn't have to do both. However, if bulk crafting was an option, I don't really think this would be necessary. We're looking for anything to cut down on crafting time because it's currently such a chore, but I think if we had bulk crafting, we wouldn't mind two-step crafting much at all. Ah, something else that would be nice though? Another obvious one, crafting using the materials in your storage instead of just your pockets. This is also a little confusing because long before the game even came out, I was hoping there would be a way to do this. But nope, if you want to craft something, you've got to head into your house and grab it out of storage first. I don't think it would make the game too easy or handholdy or something to let us just use our storage anytime we want to craft. All that's doing is cutting down on unnecessary tedium. And if there's anything you don't want your life sim game to be, it's tedious. But I would even settle with only crafting from storage inside your house, honestly. I mean, it would make sense. Your items are stored inside your house, so you've got to go in to use them. It's still a limitation so that the mechanic makes narrative sense, but you've removed the tedium and made it all a lot more fun. So I'll take either one, craft from storage anywhere or just in my house, as long as I don't have to keep making trips back and forth to take and deposit materials again and again and again. Here are a few things that I'm surprised haven't been changed in past games. When selling an item at any store in any video game in the entire world that isn't Animal Crossing, you can see the sell value of an item right there on the sell menu. And yet, here we are, playing Animal Crossing. And for some reason, you can't. When you're buying from the cabinet or the Nook Miles kiosk, you can see how much each item costs, but if you want to know how much you're getting for an individual item, you've got to only select that one item and ask Timmy and Tommy. It's extremely baffling. I mean, uh, it's positively baffling. And it might not sound like a big deal, but to me, it is a huge pain. Sure, you can use the item box outside to check prices. You just have to select and deselect items and add a little chunk to each one to get the accurate sell value. But this is also an extra step that just doesn't need to be there, and you still have to go inside to sell your items when you're done checking. I'm telling you, teeniest, tiniest patch in the world here. They don't even have to revamp the sell menu or anything. Just have a little number pop up somewhere on the screen when the cursor is over an item. Simple. More than simple. 
ultra mega simple, and it would help so, so much. I sell things constantly. Please make doing so a little easier. Another weird issue that seems like it would have been solved by now is trying to see things behind trees and buildings. Plenty of games will make objects disappear or become transparent when the character is behind them because that makes sense. <laughs> Being able to see what we're doing is, you know, pretty important. Especially if it is a game where you're going behind objects very regularly, like Animal Crossing. You can get objects to disappear, but only when bringing up the inventory. This is a limitation that I simply don't understand, and when I'm trying to grab something that I can't see, it's a pain to have to bring up the screen, move a little, bring up the screen, move a little. Seems simple enough to me to have these objects fade out automatically when you're behind them, or at least go a tiny bit see-through. I have a lot of fruit trees in my town, and finding fruit and buried objects and such should not be as hard as it is. But even if they're not gonna make this happen automatically, can it at least happen when we're fishing? If bringing up the inventory makes stuff disappear, I feel like it only makes sense that fishing would do it as well. If my character can see what's going on, I should be able to, and few things are more annoying than trying to catch a particularly pesky fish when a building or a tree is in the way. And speaking of fishing, I think many people, like myself, were disappointed to find that fishing in New Horizons is the same it's always been. It's an extremely simple mechanic. Even if they weren't going to revamp it entirely though, it would have been nice if they'd at least made it a little more intuitive. What I'm proposing is that they patch in the ability to move your pole slightly while the lure is in the water. And I really don't mean a lot here, I just mean like you can sort of wiggle it around the slightest amount just to fine tune your positioning. You know, like in real life. <laughs> You're not locked to the spot once you cast your line. Give a very small range of movement and that'll cut down on the aggravation of being just out of a fish's line of sight and having to pull back and reposition and cross your fingers and cast all over again. It would save a ton of unneeded tweaking time. Similarly, even after five games, it can still be a little tricky getting your aim just right when using tools, particularly the shovel. The world is grid-based, but you can't really see the grid, you've just gotta kinda eyeball it, and I think we've all experienced the frustration of digging the wrong spot multiple times. Maybe there could be an option to telegraph where your tool is going to go whenever you've got one out, like with a little symbol or something. Even simpler though, how about using a button to lock yourself in place so you can swivel without walking forward? The inability to aim independently of walking is really the biggest problem here, so that would help tremendously. In fact, they could just make it so you hold down the A button to do it. I know in the case of nets, that already makes you ready it and walk slowly, but maybe just for the shovel, it makes you stop completely so you can aim. A very small change that would make the digging experience much more comfortable. Okay, so here's a weird one. New Leaf gave us the ability to store turnips in our cupboards, but turnip storage has been suspiciously left out of New Horizons. The only possible reason for this I've been able to think of is that the devs don't want us relying on turnips too much, maybe because they're one way to get filthy rich in Animal Crossing without having to do much of anything else. Was this a way to sort of nerf the mechanic, discourage people from buying too many turnips by forcing them to store those turnips out in the open? Well, if that's the reason, that's not a good reason. <laughs> Clearly, this isn't stopping people from going turnip crazy. All it's doing is aggravating us when we do go turnip crazy. We've got to have giant patches of space in our towns or dedicate entire rooms to storing turnips. And this isn't a rare thing. We buy turnips every week and sometimes need to store them for up to a week. So all I ask for is for the ability to put turnips in storage. Whatever the reason was not to let us, I ask the developers to reverse their decision because these turnips don't really match the ambiance I'm trying to achieve in this room. And speaking of houses, houses offer camera control. And speaking of camera control, I'd like to have it outside of houses. <laughs> Excellent double segue, thank you. Seriously though, another slight disappointment when I booted up the game for the first time was that you can't control the camera very much. I was really hoping to be able to move it left and right at least a little. You can change its vertical orientation, but that's it. And I get it. Because of the rolling landscape and the very forward-facing nature of the world, it would be complicated to let us move the camera around too much and would require a totally different visual style. But all I'm asking for is a little control here. The kind of slight horizontal tilting that we already see in the game, like when you talk to people. 
Heck, even the camera mode gives us some zooming and panning control. Why can't we have that all the time? I know I'd appreciate it, if anything, just to make the world seem a little more dynamic, less stiff and unchanging. Here's one I think just about everyone could get behind. While we were once excited by the prospect of holidays, Bunny Day has painted a grim picture of what we can expect from them. Sure, it's fun collecting eggs when you want to collect eggs, but when you're just trying to go about your life and fish and collect materials, this whole thing can get super annoying. Nintendo already gave us a patch that lowered the rates for certain egg types, thank goodness, but personally, I still feel like they get in the way. Shout out to Lonely Goomba for suggesting that you have to deliberately talk to zippity skippity zappity or whatever the heck his name is, and he'll make eggs appear for an hour at a time. That way, if you want to hunt, you can hunt. If you're not interested in crafting the 16,000 Bunny Day items that apparently exist, you don't have to bother. It's already too late for Bunny Day, but hopefully they'll adopt a system like that with future holidays, assuming they plan on making them similar. Maybe they don't. I guess we'll just have to wait and see. All right, here's another one that I think will really resonate with people. Visiting friends in New Horizons is a pain. It's easier than it was in past entries, sure, but it's also, like... 2020, we are so far past the age of online experiences that are anything but smooth and easy, especially when we are now paying for the privilege. And it's not like the connection is a problem, at least not in my experience. It's not always 100% perfect, but it's certainly never been an issue. No, it's two things. One, you have to dig through way too much dialogue to do anything. You have to select like five different options just to see if any of your friends have their gates open. And there are all these little connecting and searching pauses throughout. There is no reason for this. This is purely by design. The developers made Orville talk way too much and hid the important options behind a bunch of other less important options. Any of this could be changed with incredible ease. Personally, I think you should be able to open your town's gate from the friend menu, but I would settle with just walking up to the gate and doing it there. Then instead of a dialogue box, there should just be a menu where you can use Nook Miles Plus tickets or search for friends or generate dodo codes, etc. Furthermore, the fact that everyone's game pauses whenever someone enters or exits an island is a real downer. Especially when you're trying to get a lot of people together or casually leave your gates open for your friends to drop in whenever they want, all the pausing and loading brings everything to a grinding halt way too often. And I know this is something they could patch. They could either make it so there's no pause at all or just reduce the pause dramatically. I know this because I've seen other games with online features that aren't this clunky and convoluted. Looted. If this was the best the developers could do, then I will thank them for trying their best, but I will also suggest they bring in someone who knows how to do it better. Hey, maybe I'm wrong, maybe there's something going on behind the scenes that requires this clunkiness, but I'm always going to remain skeptical of that idea. Animal Crossing has got to be, like... <laughs> the least taxing online game in existence. It's not competitive, no one is relying on split-second reactions, it's just little people running around picking up fruit and showing each other fish. Please make the process a little smoother. That's it for smaller patches, but allow me to indulge ever so slightly and talk about a few things that might be just a hair too big to consider patches and would probably come through full updates. They're still relatively simple, so I figured this was still a fine time to cover them. First off, I'm not really sure if maybe they just didn't write as much dialogue for this game or what, but it felt like I started to hit repeated dialogue way sooner than with previous games. And that's despite not talking to my villagers a lot at all, because they rarely have anything more to say than one or two little lines of nothing. Coming up with some new conversations and such and giving them to the villagers would be hugely appreciated. Furthermore, I've been disappointed to see so few personality types. Coming up with a few new types and even creating new villagers for them and releasing them upon the world would be so cool. Just make it like the villager update or something. Some big event where all villagers become more interesting and there are even more animals to choose from. Another aspect of the game that I was excited about at first but soon realized how repetitive it was. Islands. I positively love the idea of randomly generated islands to visit so there's no shortage of stuff to do. But it isn't long before you see how few different types there are, and instead of being truly random, they're really just based on a handful of presets. And I don't know if this is just my own bad luck or what, but after a few days with the game, I could not find any interesting islands. I mean, it's been weeks now of just getting the same one or two simple islands with my native fruit and a river, and that's it. I'll get an island with peaches if I'm lucky. No tarantula island, no bamboo island, no bell rock island, nothing. 
dozens and dozens of tickets, which cost about 12,000 bells each if you consider that you could trade the miles you spent on bell vouchers instead, and I'm getting very little in the way of returns. So I propose the developers change the appearance rates at least a hair, but more importantly, they should come up with some new types. Different layouts, different bugs, different fruit, different sizes, different anything. Random chance for rare items to be buried or spawn in treasure chests or something. Every trip to an island should be a surprise. Either add in more random elements or just add a bunch of new types to the list, because this was one of my favorite new features when I started playing, but now it's getting old fast. Finally, have you ever noticed how Animal Crossing is a game where you have your own house and you collect all sorts of furniture, but for some reason it makes you put all that furniture on the floor? <laughs> I mean, the whole point is to make it look like a real house, but houses have little things called counters and shelves. It certainly helps that you can put items on things like tables, but that only takes you so far. I want to make myself a kitchen, but it's never going to look right without a lot of counters and shelves. So I think they should just be built right into the house. Some items give you the option to either place on the floor or hang on the wall, right? Well, how about every small item gives you the option to place on the floor or put up on a shelf? Just a simple simple, plain color wooden shelf, nothing fancy. And counters, we should be able to just build them up using the edit menu or something. Anything to make my kitchen look like a real kitchen. Because now, it looks like a kitchen being set up in a room that's not actually a kitchen, in the house where you just moved and you brought all the kitchen stuff in your car, but the moving guys haven't come with your furniture yet. I've got one final request. I don't know if it would be a little patch or a big update or what, and I certainly don't know if it's a request that will ever be heeded by Nintendo. They're finally looking into a way to back up our towns, and that's cool. I still feel like cloud backups should be a given, especially since time traveling and item duping using a version 1.0 copy of the game are letting people cheat all they want, but hey, maybe something similar is coming, fine. I'm willing to look past it for now but only allowing one island per Switch is not a real limitation of the game. It is a choice Nintendo is making, and they continue to make that choice every single day they don't change it. This is legitimately harming the experiences of many players. They want to have their own towns. They want to be the resident manager and see everything the game has to offer, but they can do neither when they're forced to either share or buy a whole extra Switch and copy of the game. No matter how much I like this game, I will never be okay with this system. And even though I know it's not likely, it wouldn't be a patch request video without mentioning this whole thing. You start up a game on your profile and you're given the option. Do you want to join another player's town or create your own? Done. Everyone can enjoy the game however they want. That's all I've got for you today because I've got to stop somewhere and these seasonal allergies are really hard on my voice. <clears throat> but I'm sure I'll come up with more ideas for small but big changes they could make to Animal Crossing New Horizons and I'm sure you've got plenty of your own ideas as well. It is of utmost importance that you head down to the comment section and leave a comment sharing those ideas. Also acceptable would be a comment expressing an opinion on the ideas I presented in this video. Also acceptable would be a recipe detailing your favorite way to eat Brussels sprouts. When stuck inside the house all day, the temptation to eat nothing but convenient garbage is very strong, but please remember that greens are integral to your diet. I like to cut them in half, put them flat side down in a pan, and fry them in olive oil, then finish them off in the oven with minced garlic and a little cheese on top. Thank you for watching, and have an exceptional day.